Okay, so now we are going to go over integrated rate laws. And the main thing that we're asking ourselves when we talk about integrated rate laws is how does the concentration of a reactant depend on time? So, for simplicity, let's return to our example where we have one reactant A decomposing into its products. Now, we know from the rate equation that the rate is equal to the negative of the change in concentration of A over the change in time. And for you calculus fans, we can, defi we can define this more precisely as negative D concentration of A dt. So regardless of the order of the reaction, this reaction could be first order, zero order, second order, whatever. Regardless of the order, the rate is always equal to these things. So now let's suppose we have a zero order reaction. A reaction in which the concentration is independent of time. For a zero order reaction, we say that the rate which is equal to all which is equal to both of these things is simply equal to K times the concentration of A to the zero power. And since anything to the zero power is one, we say that this is just equal to K. So now we have negative delta concentration of A over delta T equals K. So basically the idea is if I rearrange this equation and I integrate the equation over a time interval and from the initial concentration to the final concentration, we'll end up getting uh, an equation in which we can predict the concentration given a time. So the, equa the solution to this equation is, or rather we could re rewrite this equation as the following. So this equation says that the concentration at time t equals negative kt plus the concentration, the initial concentration of A. So basically we have you know four things going on here. So if we know any three of these quantities, we can figure out the other one using this equation. And it, it, most often we're given an initial concentration and we know the rate constant and then we know the time that we allow the reaction to proceed and then usually we end up figuring out this guy, the uh, whatever the concentration is at that time. So in general, integrated rate laws are used to predict the concentration after a certain time is passed. So that was the zero order integrated rate law. Now let's move on to a first order integrated rate law. So for the first order integrated rate law, it says that the rate, which is equal to these two things here, is equal to K times the concentration of A to the first power, or just the concentration of A. So now we're in a situation where we have negative delta concentration of A over delta T equals K times the concentration of A, because this is first order. And if we do sort of the same thing by rearranging this equation and integrating it, we'll end up getting the following equation. So this equation says that the natural logarithm of the concentration of A at time t equals negative kt plus the natural logarithm of the initial concentration. Once again, if we know any three of these quantities, we can solve for the unknown. Usually the unknown is the concentration. That's what we're generally trying to predict. But make no mistake, we could predict time if we knew it, if we knew the, the uh, concentration at time t, 
or we could solve for the rate constant if that was unknown as well and the other three weren't known. So just you know a heads up on the different kinds of problems that can be associated with integrated rate laws. You can you can end up solving for you know four different things. So that just about does it for a first order integrated rate law. Now let's go over to a second order integrated rate law. Once again, the rate is equal to these two things. That just never changes, no matter what, as long as you have this type of reaction where A decomposes into products. The only difference is now we have a second order reaction, so we know that rate, which is equal to this stuff, is equal to K times the concentration of A squared. So if we look at this part of the equation here, we see that delta concentration of A, the negative of delta concentration of A, over delta T is equal to K times the concentration of A squared. If we rearrange and then integrate this equation, we'll get the following equation. We will get that 1 over the concentration of A at time T is equal to KT plus 1 over the initial concentration. Notice that this KT is no longer negative for a second order, it's actually positive, so in the first order, uh, zero order and first order we use minus KT, but in second order it's different, it's just positive KT. So once again, any three of these quantities, the initial concentration, the final concentration, the time interval, or the rate constant, and we can solve for whichever one is unknown.